Okay, so we've created our eye. We've got an eyelid that we can actually change by selecting the outer sphere. We've clicked on slice on and we can change the eyelids, the bottom eyelid, which happens to be the top slider and the top eyelid, which happens to be the bottom slider. The only thing that we haven't actually done is we haven't given material to the eyelid itself. So I'm gonna to go to my material editor and I'm gonna choose a completely different slot. I'm not gonna drag it across because obviously we don't have the same specular highlights for skin that we have for the different types of the moist bits in the middle with the cornea, the, the white bit and the iris and the pupil. So I'm gonna select a new sample slot and I'm gonna select diffuse and I'm gonna take sort of a pinky color, choose a pinky color, to sort of look like skin a little and I really want it to be fairly flat uh, if I want, I can choose a different type of algorithm to create it. I think this particular one here can be quite good. The Orin, Nea and Blin can give quite a soft feel to it. Again, correct, get to the pinky sort of look to it. Make it perhaps a little bit brighter. Can give quite a quite a quite a dull look. It's maybe a little bit better for the skin. And I can rename this one and call it skin. Obviously we're not doing materials in depth, we're just creating something to look reasonably okay. Click OK. Make sure that the eyelid is selected. You can see over here it says eyelid, and so then I can click this button, assign material to selection, and it's assigned. I shut down my material editor, I don't need that. And if I want to do a quick render to see what it looks like, I can click my little render production, and it shows me, there's my eye. Got a bit of an interesting shadow going across it at that point, but, uh, Okay, let's just move it around then. So Alt and middle mouse key just to move it around. Turn off my grid. This is actually, uh, this is one of my front viewport, but just for this particular example, there we go, you can see the shadows coming down a bit lower. So what I'm gonna do is gonna hit F for front to take this particular viewport back to the front view. Alt W shows me all my four views. So I've got a front viewport, top viewport, left viewport, and my perspective viewport over here. And at the moment, I'm going to carry on working the front viewport. So I'm going to select that. I'm going to hit Alt W to make it maximum screen size. I'm going to shut down actually my graph art modeling tool. I don't need to see that. Zoom in just a tiny bit and move it across. Because the next thing we want to do is start to create the controllers that will control the eye. Now, one of the things I like to do is have my mesh, the things that are going to render and be seen on one layer and have my controllers, the stuff that I don't want to render, but I still want to be able to see them, but I don't want them to render in my final output, I like to have those on a separate layer. Now, to do this, you need to open up the Layer Manager. You can either go to Tools, Manage Layers, or there's a Layer Manager icon up here on the toolbar. It looks like this. Click on that, and it opens up the Layer Manager. And at the moment, it says we have got one layer, which is the default layer. And wherever this tick is applied, it says, if I create anything new, it will be added to this layer. And the little teapot over here is showing that it is a layer that will render. Now we want to create a new layer for our controls that isn't going to render. So over here we have an icon that says create new layer. So click on that. And at once the check mark or the tick is next to this new layer, telling us that anything we create now will be added to this layer. We don't want it to render, so we can turn that off. And actually, we can also select the name and call this Controls. So now we have a Controls layer. We can shut that off. Anything we create will be added to the layer with the tick. So I can just shut that off. Now, what I want to do is I want to create a number of controllers. You don't have to do the first stage. Um, you can make the eyeball look at its controller without having something in the middle of it as a controller to link it to, but I think it makes fairly good sense to have a helper right in the middle of the eyeball, which is separate from the eyeball, which is going to control how the eyeball moves. So we're going to create a controller, and to do that, we go back to our Create column, 
and then we go over here to helpers and when you click on helpers you get a whole bunch of different options down here the one that we're looking for is point click on point and then you can click anywhere in the viewport my viewport doesn't have a grid showing but you hold the G key or click hit the G key and that will add the grid back in and I just click it to one side which is fine there it is there's my point helper right click to get out of that and now I can select that if I want and go into the modify panel if I want to I can make it bigger I can make it not just a cross if I want I can make it into a box sometimes that helps but at the moment I think we just want a cross for this particular one and the, what I want to do is I want to align this particular controller to the dead center of the middle eyeball so that if I start to rotate this what we can do is we can link it such that the eyeball will also rotate so I could if I wanted to just hit alt a or alternatively there is an align panel here you can click align and then you can just select what you want it to align to and it says where do you want it to align to we want it to align to the center pivot point is at the center so it really doesn't matter click apply click OK and suddenly that point helper is like slap bang in the middle however I can't really see it so this is the point where I might want to make the size a bit bigger until those bits are just pointing out at the side and I can easily see it now all I've done is align it what I need to do now is make sure that the eyeball always follows the point helper so if I move the point helper the eyeball will follow so this is where we're going to use linking now the important thing about linking is to remember that you start off with the one that is going to follow so I want the eyeball to follow the point controller so if you like it's like another word for it is parenting and you're saying to the child in this case the eyeball who's your daddy who's your parent who are you going to follow who's going to take you by the hand and move you around so the link command is over here select and link where this little chain is you click on select and link and then you click on the eyeball and then you hold your mouse down and you drag over to the point controller and you get this little icon showing that it's going to link let go and it flashes you might have found that hard to see but the actual point controller flashed white and now the two are linked so if I select the point controller so it's selected it's white and I choose rotate which is up here select and rotate and I start to rotate it around the eyeball moves with it and you'll notice that the point controller stays absolutely bang central in the middle of the eyeball so we've now got a way of controlling the eyeball by using that point helper you control Z a couple of times to get it right back to the middle however that has just created a point helper for moving the eye around what I now want to do is I want to create another helper directly in line with this eye that we can make this point helper constantly look at so that wherever it goes this is going to follow okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit alt W to get back to the four views and I'm going to go to the left hand side view now so I'm going to right click on left hand side view Alt W to make it nice and large. If you've only got a wire screen, let's hit F3 to show you the wire screen, which is probably just what we want at the moment. And if you push down your middle mouse wheel, you can move things around, which is actually what I want to do. I want to move it over to this side of the screen so I can take this point helper and I can clone it by moving it forwards. Now, you could, if you wanted to, create a completely separate item that this could look at. But because I already know that this point helper is absolutely in the center of the eye, I can then copy it and just pull it out so that it's still directly in line with the eye and use that as my controller. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the move tool, select to move, make sure I've got my point helper selected. I'm going to hold the shift key which means that when I start to move this forward I'm going to be creating a copy. So I hold the shift key down and start to pull it out along this axis so that it's far enough away so that it can be usable for control and let go and then I get a dialog box. And dialog box says is this a copy or do you want it to be an instance or a reference if I just briefly tell you the difference between the first two a copy is independent of the original so if I make a copy if I change the original the copy won't be changed however if I make an instance and I change the original the copy will be changed as well so I want this to be a copy because if I make any changes to this one I don't want to change this one and rather than calling it point 2 which isn't a very helpful name what I'm going to call it is control 
I left or L and then click OK. Now even though I've done that if I move this item around the I will not follow. So now that I've taken this out and it's in line with the I I'm actually going to do Alt W again and I'm going to go to my perspective view so I right click on my perspective view and take that full screen. And what I want to do is I want to make this point helper that's in the middle of my eyeball always look at this point helper over here, which means I need to set up something called a constraint. Now a constraint is constraining or restricting the movement or the options of an item. So what I'm going to be saying to this controller in the middle, you aren't allowed to move in any other way than the way I tell you. And I am going to tell you that at all times you must look at this helper over here. So to do that, I need to set up a constraint. So I select the item I want to constrain, which is the point helper in the middle of this eyeball. And I go up to a menu up here called Animation. Click on Animation and go down to where it says Constraints. And these are the constraints that I have. And the one that I'm looking for is the one that says Look At. So basically I am saying to the point helper in the middle of the eye, that I am going to constrain you so that you can only look at the item I select. And the item that I will select will be this point helper over here. So I click look at constraint and I get this sort of dotted rubber band which is right in the middle of the point helper in the middle of the eye. And I pull it across to the point helper which we want it to look at and when I get the crosshairs I click OK and oh crumbs everything seems to have gone wrong. What's gone wrong? The, the eyes disappeared. Well this is just to do with how the point helper is set up. So we can just pull this across so we can see the other bits and pieces. Or alternatively, if you can't pull it across, the other thing that you can do is you can simply grab hold when you've got the hand and just pull it up and down. Is another way of getting to the same bits and pieces. Effectively, this is starting to look in the wrong direction. It's constrained, but the way that the point helper was set up means it is looking at the initial point in a different direction. So we need to change a different axis. Alternatively, we could just click Keep Initial Offset. Keep Initial Offset will take it right back to the original. Or alternatively, you can try some of these different ones here. Select Look At Axis, and sometimes that will change it so that the eyeball is back in the right view. And you also have this blue view line here, which you can make longer or shorter just over here. You can just make a huge long view line or you can make it really short. It's basically showing you that you're absolutely bang on because we pulled it out from the eye. This particular controller is in the right place. Right, so we've made the change. We've made the constraint. At the moment, the eyeball or the point helper in the middle of the eyeball, which the eyeball is parented to, has to look at this point helper here. So if I select this point helper and I start to move it, the eyeball is going to move along with it. So we've created the controllers for the eye. And to do some animation, all we'd need to do is turn on Auto key down here and set up our starting pose. And then go forward a few frames and we can move it to a different place. And forward a few frames and we can move it again. And we've set up animation. Turn off Auto key and just scrub the timeline here and you see we've created animation. I'm going to delete these, we don't really need them. That was just to demonstrate. Okay, so now we have created the eye and the controller. What if we want to control two eyes at the same time? Well what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my circular selection region and I'm going to go back to the square and I'm going to click on my select object and I'm just going to select everything in my scene. And now it's selected. And I'm going to go to Alt W to go to four screens. And I'm going to go to my front view again. So right click to select that Alt W. And holding down my middle mouse button, which happens to be a wheel, put it to one side. And this time I'm going to click Select and Move. And holding down the Shift key, I'm going to select and pull everything across to make a complete copy of all the items we selected, which includes the point helpers. And it says this is a copy or an instance. Do you remember we actually want this to be a copy? We don't want it to be an instance. And rather than saying its name is eyeball L001, we're just going to get rid of that and we're just going to put R. So this is right eye. And click OK. So now I've got two eyes set up, both of them with point helpers in the middle, so that we can move things around. 
However, they are independent from each other. I'm going to go back to Alt-W and then to Perspective. You can see that this eyeball and this eyeball will both work, but both of them are independent. So I can select this point helper here, and if I start to move it around, it doesn't affect the other eye. Right-click to come out of that. So I've got two eyeballs which are independently controlled, and what I really want to do is control them both together. And I'm going to start to show you how to do that in the next tutorial.